Bill Sr. and this is Royal Bill Jr. And we're over here talking about what? Those famous people we saw. That's right. Who do we see? Oh, uh, you know, remember? I don't forgot. Oh, with all the, the Careys. Harry Carey Sr.? Yeah. And Harry Carey Jr. That's right. And uh, we saw the entire place, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, uh, pretty fantastic. It was. It was. And they were cowboys. Yeah, the original cowboys. Yeah, they were original cowboys and what? Silent movies. Where was the sound? Well, they didn't have sound those days. They developed that later. Oh, really? And why is this Harry Carey important? Because he was the very first cowboy. And he was in silent movies, and then he was in sound movies. That's right, and he had uh, a, a son that was Harry Carey Jr. And Harry Carey Jr. was in movies, too. And it was a total of how many years? Well, 100 years. So let's go ahead and watch this uh, video here. There's Harry Carey again, senior, caught in the stampede. There he is. And the movie, Man to Man. There's Harry Carey in the movie, The Devil Horse. Movie starring with the team, John Wayne and Harry Carey and Betty Field called Destino de Sangre. And Technicolor. The quality of this color here, this is one of the postcards. Harry Carey, always the promoter. There you have it. The Navajo and Harry Carey and the dog. What a better photo is that? Everything's just perfect. Harry Carey, I love that pose on the horse or wherever. There he is. This is the pose that John Wayne copied, one of his favorite poses. John Wayne always used it. If you watch some of his movies, you'll see him putting his hand over like that way. And as we mentioned before, John Wayne idolized Harry Carey Sr. as being the real thing. This is Wild Bill. I'm posing like Harry Carey Sr. did. The same pose that Wild West uh, actor John Wayne did. And now it's Wild Bill doing the same historic shot. 
on his actual covered wagons right here. So uh, come on down to see this beautiful park and you'll enjoy all that's been developed since Harry Carey Sr. was here. Thank you very much. We'll show you more now. Yes, these are the covered wagons, not covered wagons, but actual wagons that would have been housed in that building I just showed you just a minute ago. Take a look. These are working wagons. And this is a very interesting park. Now when you come over here to this park, beware of rattlesnakes. They may be found in this area. They're indigenous to this area. They won't attack, but if disturbed or cornered, they're going to defend themselves. So be careful. Come on out to uh, Santa Clarita and take a look at this Tesoro, Tesoro Adobe Park. And look at the beautiful grounds. It's available for weddings and other occasions. So you might want to give them a call. This would be a great idea if you want a historic cowboy theme. This is Joe's cabin, and it's uh, associated with Joe Harris, another fellow actor and friend of Harry Carey. They were good friends in life, and not only in life, but in death. They actually are cremated next to each other in New York. This is a one-story residence, and uh, when Joe Harris came, he loved the ranch so much that Harry Carey uh, built this for him so he could stay there at the ranch. Let me get a pullback. I'll get a nice shot of that. This is Joe Harris's home that Harry Carey built for him just so he could stay on the ranch and became the best of friends in life and in death. Harry Carey had two children, Harry Carey Jr. and Ella. Ella just loved her horses. So we pull back and we take a look at this. It was originally a chicken coop. Let me pull back a little further. I'll shoot it again. I'm still using that Harry Carey pose. We're at the house that was rebuilt after the wood house was destroyed in 1932. And this is the actual residence that Harry Carey Sr. lived in. Take a look at this, Harry Carey and his wife. Beautiful place. This is the main, the main home of the Harry Carey Sr. and his wife and his children, Ella and Harry Carey Jr. There you are. This is Wild Bill saying, I'm on the property of Harry Carey Sr. and family. Picture. These characters are from left to right, right over here. We've got Alan Carey, Henry Herbert Nibs, Charlie Russell, and Harry Carey right down there. Look at that picture. Look at the old folks in that thing. Look at that. That's not a stage. That's the real folks then. Okay, here we go. I'll get you one more now. John Ford Universal Company was shooting a film at the Harry Carey Ranch in San Francisco, San Francisco Canyon. Look at the crew there. That's not an old-fashioned reenactment. That's the real thing. There you go for that. This is the Navo Churro sheep that Harry Carey uh, bred, sold for the meat. This shows and you also, how he befriended the Navo. Here he is, Harry Carey, uh, giving them a trip on the ship, one of his ships. There he is. And then here's another picture of the Navajo the churro sheep. in the area. Take a look at that. Native to the Navajo. The rams, as you can see right here, have four fully developed horns. This is a Navajo, and this is a Navajo blanket that Kerry purchased and sold at his trading post. He sold many Navajo blankets. Authentic general store and trading post where you'd have all his authentic Navajo. See, there's some of the Navajo blankets over there. And you'd have all that Navajo stuff and all of his general trading to trade with the people in the area. Navajo weren't thought very well of that time, like a lower class, but here's a picture to prove that Harry Carey Sr. embraced the Navajos. There's the Navajos with the children doing a rain day. This photo proves how Carey treated the Navajo. He paid for them to go on a cruise. And this photo was another Indian excursion on a glass bottom boat that Carey paid for. Navo making lunch. This is the Indian adobe bread oven, and uh, Boy Scouts uh, helped uh, develop this thing. Let's take pull back and take a look at this thing. The actual bread oven that the Navajo used. How unbelievable is that? This is the stone used by Indians to crush acorns for a meal.
himself down lower as he travels across. As you see that sometimes in the movies where they hide, you don't know they're there. There he goes. The Bonanza, here's three Godfathers, which starring John Wayne and look what we have down here. There he is, Harry Carey Jr., directed by the famous cowboy director, John Ford. Harry Carey Jr. and John Ford, the famous director, were just really close. He always called him Uncle Jack. Here's Harry Carey Jr. right here in this film photo of the movie Silver Lodge in 1954. This is a great real photo of Harry Carey and Olive Carey at the ranch homestead. And let's pull it back a little bit so you can see all of it. And that's 1920. With Harry Carey Jr., his pride and joy, he's bringing him up to be a cowboy. What we showed you of Harry Carey Jr. just well, as a little baby. Here he is riding a horse. And that horse, his name was Shikis, which means in Navajo, my friend. And there he is the next cowboy growing up already on a horse. The Harry Carey Jr., Ben Johnson, and Quite Claude Johnson, or Claude Jarman Jr. Sorry. And this is Claude Jarman Jr. right here. We saw Back to the Future 3. Fast forward and take a look at that little boy we talked about before. And let's do a close up. Guess who that is? Harry Carey Jr. in Back to the Future 3. Remember when he went backwards, back to the west instead of future? When they dedicated this park back in November of 2005, and he strikes that, that pose, and then John Wayne, in honor, strikes that same pose in his movie, The Searchers. Harry Carey Jr. in the movie Tombstone. There you go. There's Harry Carey Jr. again. Laying down right there in this one here, which is a movie in 1947 called Pursued. Mulholland Drive, you'll know, was named after Mr. William Mulholland, the self-taught architect that built these dams. The St. Francis Dam Break is what this is about. Look at these pictures of the dam as they tried to build and get more water from Northern California to Southern California. Now look at this picture carefully. This is the time when the dam broke and destroyed good parts of Southern California. This picture was only full about four days until the dam actually crumbled, like in the picture I just showed you that follows this one. That, that doesn't spill over, that's where the dam actually started to fail, right at that spot. Look at that carefully, that's where it happened. Over here is where it failed again, the same failing area which the different photo, when it was almost full, just starting to break. This dam was built on the San Andreas Fault, Little did they know that it was on a San Andreas fault uh, that would cause that dam to crumble as it did. The water flowing from the dam again. Very histor interesting historically. Take a look at that leak. They call Mr. Will Mulholland that there's a leak. When he gets to the rent to the dam, the spillover is so large he doesn't find the leak area. If you notice, probably right on that area right over there. But now you can't see it because the water is over everywhere, so he doesn't even know what. Water is coming over that it actually spills over to the landslide. They never had that much water here, and that's another problem. So we got the St. Andreas Fault, and we got the landslide of the water just crumbling underneath it as the water just kept on filling the area. They didn't know how to make the concrete. They used it basically the, the land from the area, and uh, they didn't do the same system we use right now, separating the sand and the rest of it and making really solid concrete. The Castaic uh, train station. Thank goodness they left because, take a look right over here, that's where that train station was and it's gone. Take a look at that.